Good morning all. Um, I've spent the last couple of days building this. It's um, a piece of uh, board. It's actually uh, laid out as breadboard is laid out. It's got uh, dual op amps on it and it's um, a couple of bandpass filters. Bandpass filter there, another one on the other side. Um, also precision rectifiers, two of those and two very low frequency low pass filters. So this is the circuit that I've built and it's from Project Vocoder. Yes, this is another attempt to uh, build this 38 year old project, um, the ETI Vocoder. So let's have a look at this circuitry. So we have um, a band pass filter here. That's the first two op amps, these two op amps here. Next, we have a precision rectifier. That's the next two op amps, these two. And finally, we have um, what they call a low pass filter, which is kind of a, a level um, mechanism, which sort of stores the level coming out of the precision rectifier. You can think of this almost like rectification and smoothing. So here you'll just get a DC level, which represents the level of the signal being passed through this bandpass filter. Now the first bandpass filter, I think it's this bottom one, is centered at one kilohertz. The second one, because this is two identical uh, circuits of this, these first five op amps, is about 1.2 kilohertz. So the purpose of this video is to test um, these two bandpass filters. Now actually I don't think I need the precision rectifier and the low pass filter. I don't need these three chips. They are part of the circuit and so I'm going to be using them ultimately in the Vocoder project. But for today what I want to do is fit um, these little level indicators um, these are the KA2284 chips. It's, a, it's an odd thing. It's a single in-line um, IC there, that sort of thin integrated circuit. It drives five LEDs. Uh, this one's been implemented with three greens, a yellow and a red. And um, what's interesting about these is that they have a rectifying amplifier and a smoothing uh, filter. It's a simple resistor capacitor thing. I think it's these, this resistor and capacitor here. So actually what I'm going to do is attach these to the back end of the bandpass filter and as I say I'm going to remove these three chips and not use uh, this part of the circuit. Now I was intending to use uh, the LM3915 which is a 10 LED uh, VU meter or LED bar graph. Now this doesn't have uh, rectification and smoothing in it so if I use this it would require uh, this part of the circuit, but let's do this in stages. Let's just test the bandpass filter. So I will use these. Um, this is used elsewhere in the project vocoder actually, uh, which is why I've got them. And uh, so I will be coming back to this, but uh, today I'm going to use these little ones. So here's the plan. I'm going to finish this off. It needs a few additional components. I think the first two components here I haven't fitted. Um, fit these VU meters somewhere on here. These are a bit irritating really because red is the highest uh, signal but the connectors at the top it would have been better I think if the connector had been at the bottom but never mind I'm going to fit those on somehow I'm going to use this karaoke board um, with a microphone here's my microphone so I'm going to sing into this microphone a one kilohertz tone and try and get one of these uh, VU meters to light up and then I'm going to raise the pitch of that to about 1.2 kilohertz to try and get the other bandpass filter um, passing the signal through and the one kilohertz should then drop down. So really what I want to do is find two tones I can sing into this th through the karaoke board. I'm only really using this as um, a microphone preamp to generate a line level signal. This line level signal out here will go into my bandpass filters. Um, I probably don't actually need an amplifier on here because I'm not really interested in hearing uh, the sound coming from these, but we could try that. Uh, I just want to see visually that these two bandpass filters are passing different frequencies. So from the original um, Electronics Today International UK edition, uh, September 1980 article, yes, it's 38 years old. We have the two filters that I've built. Uh, this one, filter seven, is centered there on one kilohertz. The next one, filter eight, I've built is centered there. It doesn't actually say what the frequency is, but since this is a log scale, uh, this is probably about 1.2, 1.3 kilohertz, something like that. So there should be enough uh, difference between these two filters. They're all very close together because, of course, 
the idea of the vocoder is it's trying to um, analyze speech and speech uh, doesn't really go particularly high in frequency so even the highest bandpass filter is only five kilohertz so let's get started um i need to add a couple of components i haven't put this 6k2 resistor in uh, on the input to the bandpass filters and neither have i put this 1k preset pot and i'm not going to bother with a preset pot i'm actually just going to put a 510 ohm resistor in there so it'll be like the pot is just set at its midpoint that's going to be good enough uh, let's get those two components in on both of the two bandpass filters so i need four resistors so I need a couple of uh, 6K2s there in here. That's those. And I need a couple of 510 ohms. This only goes down to 2K, so that's somewhere else. Um, they're in here somewhere, 560 ohms. Uh, that goes up to 470 ohms. Right, okay, this is gonna take a little while to um, find these 510 ohm resistors. So Right, are these 6K2? Those colours don't show up very well until I shine this torch on there. Um, blue, red, zero, zero. So 6200. Yep, they're 6K2. Uh, right, I've put them here. There are the two resistors, so let's flip that over and get those soldered in. I'm uh, running this thing a bit warmer uh, these days. 350 seems to work fine. Um, I mean, I never really knew what temperature my old Antex iron was at because... Well, it didn't have a nice display like this one uh, but this seems to be working quite well i'm quite liking this slightly larger chisel tip as well so let's get those soldered in right i've got these resistors sitting uh, really high up off the board really for no other reason than i'll probably reuse them they'll probably come back out of this board at some stage and it's a reminder to me that um they're replacing potentiometers set at their halfway point. Okay, so those components are on. I can probably fire this up now. And uh, like I said, I would have pulled these three uh, dual op amps back out because I'm not using any of this uh, circuitry. I just want to power up the bandpass filter, feed the output of that directly into these little um, modules. Um, might take a look at the data sheet for that now. Uh, so this is it. It's the KA2284 uh, 5 dot dual LED level meter driver. It's a single in line. I think it's a nine pin IC. Uh, monolithic integrated circuit designed for 5 dot LED level meter drivers with a built in rectifying amplifier suitable for AC or DC level meters. Well, this is going to be AC in effect because it's an audio signal uh, such as VU meters or signal meters. Um, logarithmic indicator, so it's logs, so it's suitable for audio. Uh, high gain rectifying amplifier included. Here's the rectifying amplifier, and on this output, you put a capacitor resistor um, to provide the time constant for um, how quickly the sort of level meter bounces up and down in response to the signal, music, or whatever. Five comparators and five outputs for driving LEDs. Now, I really want to pick off the outputs from this second uh, op amp, but the outputs are actually on pins one and seven. They're not on the right hand side of the chip, they're on the left, which is a bit irritating. Um, they go through these resistors, but they're different values to the next op amp. So I'm actually thinking on the underside of the board, I might run little wire runs out to these two spare strips, which I've not had to use. And then those will be where I'll solder in these two LED VU meters. So can I do this with a couple of little wire clipping uh, leftovers? This is why I kind of keep these wire clippings. Yeah, I can probably find a couple of uh, clippings that will do the job. Yeah. Right, here are my two wire links to take inaccessible output pins. That's the output of the second op amp there, nice low impedance output, uh, into these unused strips so that I can attach my VU meters. Where are they? They're there. Right, I've soldered a couple of wires onto the uh, in and ground connections. Not sure if you can see that, but the first two are input and ground. The other two are ground and uh, VCC. Now I'm going to power these from 5 volts probably, but uh, the important thing is that I can get that 
into uh, a position where oh, no, that's not going to work brilliantly well, is it? Because I need ground. It's going to have to go in like that. And then I'll have to put a bit of a twist in it. That'll work for that one. And then I'll find, I, I put the, um, the signal line there right next to a ground line so that uh, I've got signal and ground for these things. Let's get that soldered in. Right, I've soldered these two um, VU meter boards on there. They're just dangling up on top of fairly thin wire, so they're a little bit flimsy. But uh, this is only really a temporary measure. Just want to see what's coming out of these two filters. Now, how am I going to power all this? Um, well, from this power supply, which generates an adjustable um, positive voltage and negative voltage, I'm pretty sure you can get 12, 15. I think this uh, runs off 12 nominally, this project. So I've probably set this for 12. I can't remember when I last used this. But what's bothering me more is, is the ground on this power connector does that go to ground on all of this? I'm pretty sure it does from just looking at the traces on the back. The other question is, is ground on this power connector? Because I really want to power these two things from the same power source, just use a splitter. Does ground on here go to ground on all these connectors, which will end up on ground points on this board? I don't want two different levels of ground and the associated smoke that would come out if I got that wrong. Pretty sure it is, but I'm just going to bleep these through. Right, that's my loudest beeping um, meter. Now, ground on this one is this side pin. Oh, I can't get to it very easily. It's there. And ground on here is one of these ground pins. Yeah, so that bleeps out. Ground, ground, and ground. So that one's good. Now, what about this karaoke board? Uh, ground on there should go to these grounds yeah that appears to work what's that one up there is that ground no that doesn't appear to be but these outer connectors are ground these will be ground yeah so i think ground is ground everywhere so that should be fine now what's interesting this board um has 12 volts in single supply and generates positive and negative supplies using these switch mode regulators which will be either side of this ground. This board doesn't have any switching circuitry, um, and yet minus 12 volts going in, if that's what you want to call it, ground is ground. So how does it generate the positive and negative going signals? There's no switch mode circuitry. I think it generates a sort of mid level, which it uses internally, and then it simply um, couples all of the inputs and the outputs through these electrolytic capacitors to provide a DC offset um, so yeah, this one's a bit of a curious one, but definitely ground goes to ground, so I'm happy with it. Now, next question is, how am I going to get the signal output from this? I've got a converter from uh, twin RCA phonos to a 3.5mm stereo jack um, into the input of this. What I'm thinking of doing is using these things. Um, this was the last vocoder breadboard circuit I built. Um, these little things, which are sort of um, 3.5 millimeter jack, four connections actually, ground, two rings and tip, or sleeve, two rings and tip. Um, so I should be able to, if I can find these without the pins in it, should be able to connect one of those to take, um, what I'll probably do is take left and right channels and put one through one filter and one through the other and ground into the center. Yeah, I think that's the way to get my signal from the karaoke board, from the microphone, into these filters. I'm going to see if I can find the re remainder of these wherever they might be. Right, so that's my VU meters on there. Um, a little not very elegant connector there for um, this 3.5 millimeter jack. I now need a means to get power to the power rails, which are the inner one there. That's um, plus 12 volts and this one's minus 12 volts. Ground will actually be uh, supplied through the audio connector. I could put another ground connection on, but I shouldn't need it. Um, so I'm just going to break a couple of uh, these, do little two pin ones, just so that it sits nicely in the board, so that I can supply uh, my positive and negative uh, audio power, plus 12 volts and minus 12 volts. Let's solder those in and then it should be ready to connect up. Right, I decided I would put a ground on this board because it just didn't feel right 
not to have it. So I've got uh, minus 12 volts, plus 12 volts, ground in the center there. I put a couple of pins here on the five volt output of this power supply. So let's hook those up to the two five volts. Uh, where are they? VCC on these two little display boards. Let's just peel that back a bit. So that should be five volts to the two VU meters. Um, well, I'm tempted to plug that in. Let's do it live and uh, see whether that... Uh, well, that looks promising. All the lights have come on on the power supply. Those blipped up briefly, which you'd expect. There's no smoke, so that's good. Right, I've kind of wimped out of um, putting the same power into the karaoke board, so I'm putting a lead acid battery into there. Not terribly safe because there's a lot of current there, but um, so if I speak into my microphone, which I've got here, um, I can get the two bar graphs to go up. Now the point is, I'm trying to see whether they respond to different frequencies, but they are one kilohertz, uh, which I think is this one. Yes, I think it is. And not much higher than that, but I don't think I can make a one kilohertz tone. It's a bit too high for my voice. Let's try it. So that frequency triggers the left hand one. Yeah, I can't go much higher than that with my voice. Uh, so let's try. I don't even know whether that's one kilohertz. Yeah, that kind of works. I kind of got the uh, second one to go higher than the first one by going to the very top of my pitch range. But it's a bit of a struggle. Let's try it again. Yes, not terribly sure, really. I've just noticed when I put the microphone down, you're getting these bounces. And that's because I've got the echo on on the karaoke board. So let's turn the echo right down. So there's no echo. So that's just pure um, straight from the microphone. Let's try the tones again. That definitely seems to be the one kilohertz. Yes, that seems to be working. Just about. And it's quite a strain on my voice. Actually, that nasally sound wasn't very pure. Let's try a more sign sound. one's which out of these two? Where are the capacitors? One, two, three. So that's 12N. Oh, so that's the lower frequency one. Uh, no, this is 153. So this is the lower frequency one. Um, this isn't quite working as I predicted. No, we need to be more scientific about this. Oh, maybe whistling will work better. Yeah, that works.
awesome. Anyway, uh, I think I need a drink after all that uh, warbling. So for the moment, it kind of works. Cheerio. It's a, a set of op amps. They're actually dual op amps, um, which make up uh, a bandpass filter. In fact, there are two circuits here because these are dual op amps. I've said that, haven't I? Start again. <laughs>